All right, so let's get started. So thank you everyone for taking time out of your Wednesday. It's 2.30 in the afternoon. We super appreciate you being here with us. Um, it's a little bit of a specific topic, but if you were able to join in on any of the previous webinars, um, we do a lot of focus at the hips and the pelvis. So I know there was one last week um, in regards to hip tightness. So this is kind of gonna go a little bit into that, just a little bit more specific. So um, if you haven't seen that webinar, I would highly suggest going back and watching that because it's gonna have some great information as well. Um, but let's get started. So my name is Caitlin. Um, I am a physical therapist at our Wilmette location. Um, I am a mother of two. Um, I have a three-year-old and a six-month-old, Oliver and Lucy. Um, uh, I work in the Wilmette location with both Dan and Anthony. Dan is there in the blue mask and Anthony is in the middle there. Um, and they have been with React for over a year. I have been in Wilmette for React for about three years. Um, so we have some really exciting things in the works for our Wilmette location. We're expanding, we're doubling in size. Um, but more importantly, Dan and Anthony have um, worked very, very hard on their continuing education. So within our clinic space, Dan is now offering um, dry needling, which can be great for snapping hip syndrome as well. And Anthony has done a lot of work with the uh, PNF patterns and a lot of the Maitland techniques. So a lot of joint mobilization. So I think the three of us make a pretty good team in, in Wilmet. Um, but really, I just want you to know kind of who I am before we start presenting and why I became a physical therapist. Um, you know, I am a mother, but like more importantly, I, I was an athlete throughout college. I played uh, college basketball, so I didn't specifically come in, become injured at any point in my career, but I saw a lot of my teammates go down with injuries and I watched the process of them going through physical therapy and getting back on the court. Um, and I enjoyed watching them through that process. I know it was very tough, but it was also very rewarding. Um, I like the autonomy that a physical therapist has. I always knew I wanted to work in the healthcare field. Um, I like the amount of time that we get to spend with patients. Um, we get to know people um, on a personal level. We become invested in them. They become invested in their physical therapy. Um, and we see really good results. Um, I also like working for a company like React because we all challenge each other to be better. Um, every day we go in, we're leaning on each other. We work as a team. Um, and I think, unfortunately, in the physical therapy world, you don't see that a lot. And I think React is a very, very special company um, to work for and to be a part of if you're on the treatment side, right? So um, that's just a little bit about me. Um, so let's get, so a little bit about React then. We do have six locations. Um, we're located in Wilmette, Deerfield, West Loop, Lincoln Park, Lake Short East, and River North. We have um, a lot of our appointments are scheduled on the hour. So we have a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with our patients. Um, I think that's what really separates us from other PT clinics is that when you come to a place like React, we give you the one-on-one -on -one care that you deserve. Um, a lot of our treatment is manual or hands-on. Um, so you work directly with the physical therapist. And then a lot of our spaces are open floor plans. So um, when you are with an aide or someone taking you through your exercises, the physical therapist is right there with you as well. I just wanted to give a little bit information um, that we do offer free screens. So if after any of these webinars or this specific webinar, if you find that you may be having this issue or any sort of aches or pains, um, you can contact any of the locations and get in for a free one-on-one -on -one screen with a physical therapist um, to kind of just see what's going on and what our recommendation for care would be. Um, we do currently offer online booking. So if you go to our website, bereact.com, you can find the online booking for any of the locations. Um, it will guide you through the times that we're available and it's super easy to use. We also have um, began doing telehealth appointments, which are going to be, um, that have come into great use with 
the current situation. Um, and with that, it again is with a physical therapist, similar to what we're doing today, just a Zoom call. Um, and then we work with you uh, via that. So um, our website's there. If you want to visit it, it has great information. Um, we put a lot of our blog posts on there and I want to bring that up because I did do a blog post on snapping hip syndrome. So that is filled with a lot of detail um, and it's on our website. Um, a lot of the physical therapists also will have their own blog posts and usually it's directed towards what they're interested in. Um, so I think that's very useful. Um, so let's get started. So what is snapping hip? The whole reason why you guys are here, right? So snapping hip occurs when a muscle, a tendon, or a ligament will roll over the bone in the hip. And a lot of times this will cause pain, but a lot of times it won't. Um, it's usually associated with uh, a sensation of popping or snapping. A lot of times you can see it snapping or popping over the hip and often you can hear it. Um, so the way snapping hip is classified is where it's affected. So are you feeling the snapping or hearing the snapping in the front of the hip, the side of the hip or the back of the hip? And what that will tell us is what structures are possibly involved. So let's see. So why does it occur, right? especially now more than ever, we're finding ourselves in um, different situations with work, different um, situations with like commuting to our jobs. Um, a lot of schooling has gone to remote learning. So we're finding ourselves sitting a lot more. Um, but a lot of times it's just the demand that we place on our body, right? So um, a lot of the research will talk about athletes and dancers. Um, and the demands that are placed on their body in terms of performance. So uh, a lot of sprinters, basketball players, this explosive movements over and over. Whereas dancers, it's gonna be more of those end ranges that they're placing their hips and their body in. Um, and it also happens in the general population. Like I said, you know, we're, we're, a, uh, we're a society where we sit a lot. Um, or we go from zero to 100 really fast, where we all of a sudden are going from no workout to running five miles. And those types of demands and differences we place within our joints and our body can over time cause issues. So a lot of with snapping hip, what you'll find is like these forceful leg movements. Like I said, if you're a sprinter running out of the blocks, um, these changing of positions, going from sitting to standing, um, walking, kicking, bringing the leg behind you, any type of rotation within the hip. Um, these are all movement patterns that will possibly be the reason for a snapping hip. Um, over time, these repetitive movement patterns, right, will lead to these uh, overuse injuries, which will then cause inflammation within that area. So a lot of times, you know, snapping or hipping, if it's not painful, um, if you continue to do the movements that cause that snapping, over time, those tendons become very irritated and our own body's response then is to send inflammation to the area because it's saying, hey, something's wrong. Um, and so then we end up with some itis, right? Some bursitis or some inflammation just within the joint. Um, so that's why it is very important that if you are sensing that you're having any snapping or popping, clicking or sounds within the hip that you come in to see someone to get it adjusted sooner than later, because what will happen is over time, it will become worse. And then when you do end up coming in, um, we're digging through a little bit more than what we would have at the beginning. Um, I like to use the analogy of just like a car engine light. Um, I feel like it's really simple to understand, but if your car engine light goes on, we're very quick to bring our car in to see what's wrong. The snapping sensation at your hip is your own body's way of telling you, hey, something's not right. Something's not working right. Something's not moving right. I don't know why, but come in, let us kind of pick apart what's going on, why something's not moving correctly and get it taken care of. You know, if you continue to drive your car with the check engine light on and your transmission blows, you got to get a whole nother car, right? But with the hips and with our body, unfortunately, we don't have that option. 
Um, and if, you know, you're looking to get a total hip replacement, that's something that's pretty drastic. So if it's just snapping and clicking, feel free, come on in, let's get it taken care of. Um, because over time that injury is going to lead to a bigger issue. So, um, there's, two classifications um, in terms of snapping hip. So internal snapping is just saying that the snapping is occurring at the front of the hip. So anytime you have that um, snapping sensation or you're hearing a click or a pop in the front of your hip bone, um, that typically is due to the hip flexors, the iliopsoas and the rectus femoris. And what these muscles do for us are they allow us to flex our hip or bring our knee towards our chest. Um, so you can imagine if we're spending more time sitting um, or commuting in a car, uh, those hip flexors become very, very short and they become very tight. Um, and when a muscle is shortened, it doesn't often, it often leads to weakness within that muscle. So that front of the hip snapping is typically those hip flexor muscles rolling over the front of the bones in your hip. Um, and that's what's creating that audible popping sensation. Um, the internal snapping is also called dancer's hip because it's more common in dancers. Um, and you'll often feel a sensation of snapping or a pain in the front of the hip or the groin area. Um, when people come in to see us, often what we hear is like, hey, my hip feels really, really locked. But then when I do this really weird movement of like kicking my leg out in front and rotating my knee, um, I can hear a snap and then it feels better. It feels loose, right? Um, but over time, like I said, if you continue to create the snapping and popping sensation, it can lead to irritation in the tendon to become inflamed. And then we have a bigger problem with some uh, bursitis of these tendons, which is something you do not want. Um, so external snapping is going to be the side or the back of the hip, right? So um, this is most common in the general population. Um, the snapping is often seen with the naked eye. So you'll actually see like a shudder of the skin on the outside of your hip. Um, and that is just the tendon rolling over the um, outside hip bone. Um, and people will often say that they feel like their hip is popping out of place. This isn't actually what's happening, which is a good thing. It's more of just that tendon rolling. Um, and the tendons we're talking about here is the um, largest butt muscle, the gluteus maximus. It attaches, part of its fibers attach the IT band, which is very common. Uh, people know the IT band, but what that IT band is, is just a fibrous tissue. So it doesn't really shorten or lengthen. It really depends more on the muscles that attach to it. So it's it's really that glute muscle rolling over the outside of that hip bone. And again, over time, you keep snapping, you keep getting the sensation. Um, it's going to lead to what we would consider trochanteric bursitis, um, more inflammation at that area. So I just sprinted through that and that's okay. We have a lot more. Um, I'm going to go through some demonstrations, which I think is super helpful for preventing any snapping hip syndrome. Um, but what does physical therapy do for snapping hip syndrome or any snapping hip syndrome, right? Um, our biggest goal is right there in the center. We want to return you to the activity, whatever that activity is, if it's dance, if it's walking, if it's just, hey, I want to be able to sit to stand without this sensation or this pain in my hip, right? So returning you to that level of activity um, without pain. Um, we want to improve your strength. Um, we want to restore your movement patterns. We want to improve your mobility, your flexibility, but most importantly, we want to give you the tools so that you can maintain healthy hips and you can prevent any type of injury or re-injury, right? And so that's the whole idea with physical therapy um, with the main, main goal of being pain-free, but also returning to some level of function and activity without creating any further issues or injury at the hips. Um, so I want to go through um, some of these exercises. They're pre-recorded, so I'm going to uh, click play. I'm gonna let it run through with the volume and then I'm gonna run it again uh, and just kind of talk a little bit further about what we're addressing and why we're doing this specific exercise um, to help. So there's, um, 
So I'm just going to let this play. Um, and then Dan, you let me know and make sure everybody can hear the volume. And if not, I'll just tell everybody okay. what we're doing. Okay. So what we're going to do is a psoas release. A psoas is one of the hip flexors that can cause a lot of this. Caitlin, you got to keep yourself on, on loud. Hold on. We're going to, we're going to start this over. Sorry, everyone. So many buttons, technology. All right, here we go. And hold on. Okay, so what you're going to do now is you're going to find that same hip bone, and then you're going to move just in. No one said technology was our friend. Give me one second. I think it skipped ahead. All right, here we go. Starting over. Okay, so what we're gonna do is a psoas release. A psoas is one of the hip flexors that can cause a lot of the snapping of the hip. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna find the top of your hip bone, you're gonna find your belly button, and you're gonna go right in between there. So right there. What you're gonna do is you're gonna use a lacrosse ball, you're gonna lay on that lacrosse ball, find kind of that hot spot, which we call just kind of that tender spot, lay down, and then you're gonna move that same side leg back and forth. Stay in the hot spot for about 30 seconds to a minute, and then move it just a little bit in here, here, below, and see if you can't find another little bit of a hot spot. Stay there for about 30 seconds to a minute. Okay, so what we're doing here is we are focusing on it, what we consider an active release. Um, at React, we do a lot of hands-on treatment, um, and then we teach you how to do a lot of those active releases on your own. Um, an active release basically is just a manual technique that's commonly performed within the tissue. Um, we wanna target the adhesions within the tissue or tight spots. Um, and by using a lacrosse ball, we can break those adhesions up and create a better functioning muscle. So I'm gonna play this video again. Um, and what we're really doing here is releasing the psoas muscle, which is one of the hip flexors for the internal snapping or the snapping in front of the hip. Um, this is also a great technique if you just have generalized hip tightness. Um, I like to think of it as an aggressive form of stretching. I think it does a little bit more than just a passive stretch. Um, so <laughs> let's just run this through and see. Okay, so what we're gonna do is a psoas release. A psoas so I'm just gonna talk through this video. So what I'm really um, saying is that you wanna find your belly button and then you are gonna really wanna find that top of your hip bone. You're gonna wanna go right in between that and place the ball there. Once you have the ball there, you're gonna lay on your stomach, you're gonna bend that same side leg and you're gonna go in and out with that leg. And what that's doing is it's shortening and lengthening the muscle. It's taking it through its normal range of motion. Um, and this is going to break up those adhesions. The most important part of these active muscle releases is that you find a spot that is sore and you stay on that spot for about 30 seconds to a minute. Um, we consider those hot spots. So you want to find a hot spot and then go over that hot spot and stay there. So that is the psoas release. This next video is coming up. All right, so this is going to be another active release. So we're just going to place the ball in a different location, also on one of the hip flexors, the rectus femoris. So this is going to address the internal snapping or the front of the hip snapping. I'm gonna play the video. I understand that the volume's soft, so I'm gonna play it through. And then the second time I play it through, I'm gonna describe kind of what we're doing and what we're focused on here, so. And I need to that same hip bone going to move just inside of that and you should feel a thick tendon right there. You should be able to roll your finger over it. What you're going to do is put the ball right there. You're going to get in that same position. Find that spot that's tender. Then you can go side to side here or even better yet, you can go up and down with your knee. Again, stay for about 30 seconds to a minute. And what we're doing is we're releasing that hip flexor in the front of your Okay, so we're gonna replay that. I'm gonna put it on mute and kind of, again, talk through it just so everybody can hear. Um, okay, so what you're 
What we're going to do now is instead of going in between the belly button, you're going to find that same hip bone and you're going to go right in front of your hip and you should be able to roll over a very tight tendon there. Um, you're going to place the ball right there. You're going to lay on that ball right on the same side. Now there's two leg movements you can do with this one. You can either go side to side as demonstrated, or you can go up and down. The up and down is what I prefer, but if it's more tolerable to go side to side at first, go ahead and do that. Um, again, you're going to want to find that hot spot. It shouldn't be that hard to find. And then um, stay for about 30 seconds to a minute. All right. And then let's go on. So we've done the psoas was the first one. The rectus femoris was that second one that we just went over. And now what we're going to do is show you the TFL, which is the muscle that attaches to the IT band. Um, so with this, we're gonna actually have you use a foam roller. You can use a lacrosse ball, but it's just going to be a little bit more aggressive with the lacrosse ball. So um, if you have a foam roller, that's great. Use that. Um, so I'm going to let this play out and then I will run through it um, once or twice more just so that everybody understands what we're doing here. Good. So um, I'm going to mute it and then I'll kind of talk through what we're doing here so everybody can can hear. Um, we're targeting that TFL, which is going to be the pocket muscle. So it's going to be right where your pockets located on your pants um, and it attaches to the IT band. Um, you're going to put the foam roller right in that pocket. Um, a lot of times when people press this muscle, they'll get cramping sensation. You're gonna to wanna to lay on that same side, bend your bottom knee, top leg goes across over, just like demonstrate it. And then you're gonna roll your body a little bit back and you should feel the foam roller rolling into that TFL. Straighten and lengthen that muscle by bending and flexing your bottom leg. Again, you're gonna to wanna to find that hot spot and then you're gonna to wanna to stay on that spot for about 30 seconds to a minute um, with it, that's the TFL release. Okay, so this one is interesting. I'm gonna run, I'm gonna kind of just run this video on mute and talk you through it because um, I'm understanding that the volume is very soft. So um, this is going to be the first of three exercises that we go over for snapping hip. Um, I recently had two patients, one was a dancer, one was a rower um, that both had snapping hip syndrome. And what I found through their case studies is that they both lacked hip extension. Um, so if you can't bring your hip behind you, what that tells me is that you have a lot of tightness in the front of your hip, um, which as we know what we just covered can be the cause of that snapping. So I did a little bit of um, a case study with both of them and I had them perform this specific exercise three times a day, preferably two to three times a day hold each side for about a minute and a half. Um, this is actually called the couch stretch, um, but I prefer the wall version if you can get into it and we'll go, you'll see kind of here when we go through it. Um, so let's just start this video. So what you're gonna wanna do is, um, I'm gonna show you first the wall stretch. Um, so what you're gonna wanna do is get a uh, up against the wall here, your back leg that is, uh, the one that's going to be stretched, your shin is going to go parallel with the wall. As you can see with my back foot there, you want that toe pointing it up towards the wall. So this is the aggressive way to stretch, okay? So if you can't get into this position, I'm going to have you do a different version, which is also demonstrated here. So once you have your foot up against the wall there, you're going to try to sit your chest up 
with your front leg, you should feel a really good stretch in the front of that leg that's up against the wall here. The idea being is that you wanna be able to sit all the way up to, uh, to parallel or perpendicular with the floor. Um, and this is going to help with getting that leg behind you. So this is the second version. This is the couch stretch version. As you can see, the foot isn't necessarily pointed up towards the wall. So you're gonna get into this position a little bit easier than what you would with the wall stretch. Um, again, what you wanna do though, is keep that front knee in front of you and then try to sit your entire body up. Um, so let's go through this just one more time. I'm going to play the volume well, here. stretch in the front of your hip, you're going to want to try to sit up your chest and hold that stretch for 30 seconds and then switch sides. If you're unable to get into this position with your shin against the wall and it's too much, what you can do is use a chair or a couch. You're going to get in the same position relax and it's not in that plantar flex position, you can sit up nice and tall and feel the stretch in the front of the leg. Again, hold for 30 seconds and this is going to help with extension in the hip. So again, I think this exercise is really, really good if you're able to get into this position. Um, what I found is that the two athletes that I treated, they got significantly better in a very short period of time. And I, outside of a lot of the other exercises and releases that we did, I think this was really the, the money exercise for both of them because they were consistent with it. And they demonstrated improved hip extension and then both had um, improved snapping of the hip. So um, I love this exercise. The next exercise is a common one in physical therapy, but I also think, unfortunately, it's not always done correctly. Um, may just be because people aren't um, aware of where their knees are in the position. So I'm gonna let this run through with the volume. And then again, I know it's soft, so I'm gonna play it again and then I'll explain what we're doing. But this is just a general clam. Clams are amazing. They target, if done correctly, they are the best exercise to target the glute muscle and that will help strengthen the glute muscle and provide more stability with that outside snapping hip. So let's just play this through here. All right, so here we're gonna do just a basic plan. Um, most important thing is that the band is above your knees. Think of your knee and your hip having about a 45 degree angle. Where you want to feel this is isolated in the hip. If you feel it in the front of the thigh or down towards your hamstring, Mess with the ankle of your knee, but start with about a 45 degree angle. So here, what I'm gonna have Katie do is keep her heels together, and she's going to separate her knees, and then back down. What you will see is that your hips will wanna move back. Make sure that your hips stay right where they're at, and then open and close. Again, this should be isolated at the hip or at the knee muscle. Okay, so now I'm gonna play this back through. Um, Katie here was so kind to demonstrate for us. Um, but let's see, let me mute this. All right, so you're gonna wanna use a band. You don't necessarily need to use a resistance band. If done correctly, um, honestly, you should just feel it with no resistance. Um, the main thing is keeping a 45 degree angle within the hip. That's really going to target that glute muscle so if you don't feel it in your butt muscle, go ahead and just change the angles of your feet. Do a couple reps, see if you feel it there, and then keep that angle and perform the exercise. What you want to do is make sure that that hip isn't rolling backwards. If you find that you can't do the exercise without rolling your hip back, um, some things I give patients, I tell them to do it up against a wall so they can't roll their hip back or reduce some of the um, resistance in either the band resistance or just going without no band, with going without a band. Um, 
I typically will have people do three sets of 10 or four sets of 10. What I'm really trying to do is target that glute muscle, but also fatigue it out. So some people can do 50 of these and they feel fine. So increasing the resistance, but you should be able to do, you shouldn't really be easily able to do 40 of these, right? So by the last set of 10, last set of five, you should really be feeling that fatigue in the hip. Um, okay, so the last exercise that I think is most important with snapping hip um, is going to target the glute muscles, but also the hamstring muscles. A lot of times we want to focus on that posterior chain or the backs of the legs. So let's see here. Um, this is not it. There we go. Okay, so Katie's going to demonstrate this. Again, I'm going to let it run through with the volume. Um, just for recording purposes, and then I will play it again and kind of talk through what we're focused on here. And like I said, that is not what I said. Hold on one second. I'm sorry. There we go. Oh. Technology. All right. I'm going to talk through this. Oh, there we go. Nope. All right. I'm going to talk through this one. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do here is we are focusing on a double leg bridge. Again, another super common exercise for everyone in physical therapy, but a lot of times I just feel like people don't do it correctly, um, whether that's the cueing that they've been given or the difficulty of the exercise. So what I'm having Katie do here is focus on pulling her belly button in towards her spine and that's gonna lock in the core. Um, and then what I want her to do is bridge up while maintaining that core engagement. So her hips should stay level. The last cue that I give people is to act as if there's something pulling. I'm just going to pause this here. I'm going to have them act as if there's something pulling in towards their heels, creating tension between their heels and their bottom, right? So you're really getting those hamstrings engaged. From there, I'm going to have someone hold that typically for five seconds. If that's easy, I have them come up out of the bridge. Then what I'm gonna introduce is a single leg, what you're seeing here, the single leg portion. So the idea here is that you can see Katie's hips are level and I'm gonna challenge her core and her hip strength by having her reach one of the legs out in front of her with the main goal of keeping the level of the pelvis equal. Um, what you'll see is if someone can't do this because of weakness in their glutes or their hamstrings or even their core is that their hips will drop. Um, Ideally, you want to alternate this and you want to hold it for five seconds on each side. So I'm going to play this again just so it runs straight through. But we're going to start with that double leg bridge. I'm going to have Katie engage her core, pull her belly button in towards her spine. Okay. And I'm going to talk a lot here. <laughs> Good. There. So she just engaged her core. She got set there. She's going to lift her hips up, squeeze her glutes at the top. Okay, keeping her pelvis level. And then what I'm gonna have her do is create that tension as if someone's pulling her heel in towards her bottom. That's gonna activate the backs of the legs or the hamstring, right? So right here, if this is easy, she's ready for the single leg, right? So now I'm gonna have her, there you go. I'm gonna have her kick that leg out while maintaining her hips. She needs a little bit of cueing to perform this. That's okay, it's challenging. Have her hold it for five seconds, back down, engage that core, those glutes. And you can see how she catches herself and she pulls in that hamstring, good. And then back down. With this exercise, I would say most people start with just the double leg bridge, getting the cueing down, um, performing it correctly. And then within a session or two, um, if that's easy, I will have them start doing the single leg. So at home, to manage your snapping hip or to prevent it, what I would say is start with the double leg bridges, hold them for anywhere from 10 to 20 seconds. If those are easy, go ahead and start kicking one leg out, maintaining your pelvis and hold each side for five seconds. And there we go. Okay. so. I know that was really fast. I'm a fast talker. I apologize. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat so that we can answer them. Um, but I'm 
really happy with these exercises in the way that I've seen them um, prevent snapping hip, but also just treat snapping hip. We've had really good results in the clinic with these. Um, so if you currently have the snapping hip, um, what I would suggest is give these a shot. If you just have generalized hip tightness, I'd also say these are really, really good exercises to target the hips, even just for tightness. Um, and then if you do think something is going on that you'd like to get addressed, again, we do free screens. We're willing to talk to you. Um, if you want, there's my email on this page. Feel free to reach out to me directly. I also uh, included our uh, Will Met office phone number. Um, always willing to talk to you if you have any questions, concerns, um, or if you just uh, want any other exercises or anything like that, I'm, I'm happy to help. Um, I put our website up there. Again, it's full of great information. Um, there is a YouTube channel for React, which is also filled with a lot of the active releases and stretches that can be super helpful. Um, we do have an Instagram page and Facebook page if you're looking for any other additional blog shout outs or anything like that. Um, thank you so much again for taking time out of your Wednesday to hang out with us. Um, we appreciate your time. We're happy to help. We hope these are, are helpful and useful for you. Um, and we look forward to um, spending more time with you. So thanks. <laughs>